All right, and we back. Today we're gonna talk a little bit about the NBA. We talked about the NBA a couple weeks ago. I really just kind of go want to go over each of the teams at this point. I believe at this point there's 20 games, 20 to 22 games played for each team. Um, obviously we're gonna start with the Wizards. Wizards are on pace to be one of the worst teams in the NBA. They have a negative point differential of minus 16.85. That's the worst point differential in NBA history. They're all in two wins over the Atlanta Hawks, I believe, back around Halloween. There's not much to say about the Wizards other than they fucking stink. Jazz, same thing. They are a negative 10 point differential this season. They're really not playing their uh, the veterans that much. Obviously, Lloyd Markin and John Collins, Jordan Clarkson, Colin Sexton are all getting some minutes, but most of the guys on this team are in their first, second, or third year, which is good because they're, you know, Keontae George has been a great tank commander. You want to go get a high-volume guy like a, a Cooper Flagg or an Ace Bailey or a Dylan Harper. Not a bad way to do it. Next up, the Pelicans. Even though they have a worse point differential, they do have a lot more hope on this team. They're 5-18 and 18 at the point of I'm recording this. But they lost, again, Brandon Ingram, Herb Jones, C.J. McCollum, DeJounte Murray, Trey Murphy were all out at various points. You're still missing Zion, but most of those guys back, um, they're more competitive. And at the end of the day, this is a team that we projected to be at least a borderline playoff team with all these guys on the roster. So it'll be interesting to see what they do down the stretch of the season. Next up, I have Portland. They're 8-14 and 14 at the time of this recording. They have a negative 8-point differential. But weirdly enough, it's not because of the vets, right? Simons is only shooting uh, 40%. Excuse me, not 40. He was shot 39% from the field last year, or from three. This year he's shooting 33%. This year he's shooting 33%. Jeremy Grant is 31 in March. He has an effective field goal percentage, seven points below league average, and he doesn't rebound the ball well. Robert Williams is still hurt. DeAndre Ayton doesn't get to the rim, doesn't put pressure on the rim. He has a comically low field goal percentage. Doesn't get to the rim, doesn't get to the free throw line. I, I don't really understand how this team is 8-14, and 14, but they are. And at the end of the day, these guys, the guys on their roster, the veterans, they're in the way of the young guys. Something has to give soon. Next up, we got Charlotte. Right now, this team is, I'm looking at it right here, 6-16 six and 16 at the date of this recording. Lost seven straight, nine of the last ten. LaMelo Ball is continuing to be out. Great Williams, obviously, towards ACL. Mark Williams is still ramping up. Obviously, Brandon Miller looks great, but this is a team that's still looking toward the draft. Philadelphia, at the time of this, they're 5-15, and 15, net rating of minus 6. It's been a really rough season for the Philadelphia 76ers. Maxie's been great, 23 points, 4 assists, 3 threes on 39 from deep. Jared McCain, obviously, is probably going to win Rookie of the Year. 17.3 assists, two threes on 38 from deep. I mean, he's been a stud. I mean, those two, you go get a... I don't, I don't know what Philly should do in terms of if they should tank. Just kind of give this as like a gap year season. Let Paul George and Joel Embiid get healthy. Let those two rock, develop some of their young guys, and then go get a top... Um, because their pick is top six protected. If you go get, you know, a VJ Edgecombe, uh, I doubt you get Cooper Flag, but, you know, a Cooper Flag, a Derek Harper, or I mean, Dylan Harper, uh, an Ace Bailey, that would be a pretty nasty fucking team. The Pacers, I mean, they have been such a disappointment. I have them here at 24. They're 9 and 14 at the time of this recording. Um, net rating of minus five. They lost to Brooklyn a couple days ago. They get 90 points. I mean, this is a team that was. Uh, defined by their offense last season, and they really can't find it. They've lost four straight, seven of the last ten. Three wins in their three wins in that stretch came against sub 500 opponents in the Wizards, Pelicans, and Blazers, and none of those teams are trying to win. Tyrese Halliburton is the big question, right? He went from uh, 60% on the field and 36 from deep to 55 from the field, which is good, but only 33% deep. He is the engine. If he is not playing well, they're going to continue to struggle. Toronto, this is an intriguing team. They're seven and 16. They're not competing, but a lot of their young guys are looking good. They won three out of four before they lost to Oklahoma City, but everybody loses to Oklahoma City. Scotty Barnes and RJ Barrett are looking good, especially playing well together. They're both averaging 20 points and six assists, and they have a positive point positive point differential when they're both in the game together. I don't, you know, they're not going to make the playoffs. They might make the play in. The East is obviously significantly weaker than the West. Um, it'll be interesting, but I think Toronto, they're in a good spot. Obviously, Grady Duke and Ocha Agbaju are both playing much better than they did last season. They're kind of having mini breakouts, each, I believe, averaging at least six points more than they did last season. So, Toronto, I've watched a decent amount of Toronto Raptors this season, um, and they look good. Detroit, they're 9 and 15. They're a minus three net rating team. Uh, they went one and three in the last week, and they've dropped seven of the last nine. They already have nine wins. They're going to top their win total of 14 last season. And they're only a game out of the play-in, which is crazy considering, you know, they're six games under 500 already. But, I mean, 27-14 and 14 against Boston for Cade Cunningham. He's averaging 24-9. and nine. Listen, you might want to continue to tank if you're uh, Detroit, but Cade Cunningham might not let you. The Bulls, uh, they are at this time 10-13. and 13. They need, they need someone to trade for Vucevic. He's doing too well. Um, he went for 39 against San Antonio. Averaging 22, 10, 3 assists, and 2 threes. 47 from deep. He's only making 20 million this year, 22 next year, 21.5, or whatever it is. Listen, the Bulls need to try to get it. Stop trying to compete for the playoffs. Trade Vooch, trade Levine, just get it over with. Another team that needs to do that, Brooklyn. They're 10 and 13. 10 and 13. Nobody expected Brooklyn to be where they're at now. 
Cam Johnson needs to go. He dropped 26 points against the uh, Pacers, averaging 19.33s on 43% from deep. You might be able to get two first round picks for Cam Johnson if you're the Nets. Next up, we're going to finally start to see 500 teams. I have the Lakers here. Lakers, they're 12 and 10. They have a minus five net rating. They look so good. I, I don't, I just, the roster needs to be rebuilt. JJ Redick is a, he seems like he's got a good head coach. I don't, or he seems like he's a good head coach. I don't know if they, they're buying into his message. The team just, there's no effort. There's no effort. Like, and it's tough for JJ because, like, I, his schemes are so much better than uh, Darvin Ham's. But the Lakers have dropped six for the last eight. Like, they're, LeBron James is fucking 40. Like, AD's playing great. LeBron's playing great. As long as you have those two, you'll compete for a championship. But I just, the roster around it is terrible. Going back to the sub-500 teams, we got the Kings. They're 10-13, but they do have a plus one net rating. Um, they're 2-7 in their last nine, and their shooters can't hit the side of a barn. Keegan Murray, Kevin Hurd, Trey Lyles, Doug McDermott are shooting a combined 29% from three. And DeMar Rosen and uh, De'Aaron Fox are shooting 33% from three combined. There's absolutely no spacing. And those are the six top players in their uh, three-point percentage attempts. Three-point attempts. Sorry, I'm stuttering. It's just in the West. It's not good enough. Back to the 500 teams. We have the Spurs. They're 11 and 11. They do have a negative 1.2 net rating. Um, and Vic missed the game against the Bulls, and they got crushed. So it's, it showed he's plus three for 100%. The Spurs are plus three points per 100 possessions with him on the floor, minus five when he's off. Um, and, it, you know, you would like to see him more toward the basket, but the Spurs are 5-1 and one when he attempts 10 threes and 8-2 and two when he makes 30% of threes. So, like, his spacing is integral to this team's success. The Heat, they're 10-10. Ten and 10. I have them at 16. They have felt very mid, middle of the road. You know, they're 10-10 they're ten and 10 with a plus 2 net rating. Um, even though they beat the shit out of L.A., it comes on the heels of back-to-back -back losses. And the Lakers are kind of in a free fall right now as it is. But again, there's flashes. There's always been flashes of this team in the regular season. Jimmy Butler is a really good uh, perimeter defender. Bam, he, again, he's a great defender. The offense has been the question mark for this team, especially for Bam. But I mean, the playmaking for this team is really where it's at. Bam had seven assists. Jimmy Butler, Duncan Robinson, Kevin Love, Pelle Larson each had five assists. Pelle Larson has been a great piece for this Heat team. Cal Hero had four, and he's been, you know, a great scorer for this team. The Heat just need to play more consistently, but they're in a good spot. Atlanta, they're 12 and 11. They do have a minus two net rating, but uh, they're 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 on fire right now. The Trey Young plus three and D wings uh, between Zachary Reese, Jalen Johnson, DeAndre Hunter. It, you know, it's Jalen Johnson again, another guy that's playing much better. They beat the Milwaukee Bucks. Um, they're five and zero. They beat the Cavs twice, and the Cavs are 20 and three. I think at this time, Trey Young's averaging 12 assists. But again, Jalen Johnson, 20 points, 10 rebounds, six assists, a steal, and a block. He's not even 23 years old. He is having a breakout season. Next up, Phoenix Suns. They're 12 and 9. They have a minus one uh, net rating. It, the problem with this team is KD can't stay healthy, and this team needs KD. Um, he's out for a week with a sprained ankle, and then they lost to the New Orleans Pelicans, and they have to play Miami and Orlando. They're plus five with him on the floor and minus five when he's off it. The team goes and rises and flows, ebbs and flows, highs and lows, whatever. It's with Kevin Durant. Everybody wants to tell me Devin Booker's best player on this team, most important player on this team. Wrong. Next up, surprisingly, I have Denver. They're 11 and 9 at this point. They only have a plus one net rating. I mean, Jokic, he, he's incredible. He just had a triple-double against the Cleveland Cavaliers, but th he doesn't have any help. This is like, he's averaging 30, 13, 10 assists, two threes and two steals on 56 from the field and 50 from deep. They're averaging, they're outscoring opponents by 10 points when he's on the floor. The problem is they're minus 18 when he's on the bench. Jamal Murray, Michael Porter Jr., Christian Brown, Aaron Gordon, none of them can carry lineups when he's on the floor. Jokic has seven wins over replacement player. The rest of the Nuggets combined have two. That I mean, that just in and of itself should tell you everything you need to know. Next up, another team that's that's uh, struggling to say the least. The Minnesota Timberwolves. They're eleven and ten. Maybe plus four net rating. The, my deep issue with the second apron is the fact that it's it's the Nuggets have made cost cutting issues. The Timberwolves have made cost cutting issues. I mean, these, the Denver Nuggets made a championship two years ago and couldn't afford to resign their guys because they didn't want to pay the second apron tax or the repeater tax. And the same thing with the Minnesota Timberwolves trading Cat away. And Cat is he turned into a bona fide superstar, bona fide superstar in New York. Regardless, listen, Timberwolves were eight and ten. They went on a nice three game win streak. Two um, all against LA teams, two Clippers, one Lakers, and neither are really offensive juggernauts. Uh, they didn't allow more than 92 points between any of those games. That's that's impressive. Obviously, Julius Randle coming over, That's it, it's been a tough kind of mesh point. And again, they did it in September, so it's not like there's been much. But Rudy Gobert, Jaden McDaniels, Anthony Edwards, you, you're starting to see the impact of their defensive abilities on Julius Randle and his effort and impact on that side of the floor. Tim Wolves, they might be figuring things out. Next up, the Clippers. I, listen, I did not expect. I When I did my uh, playoff prediction, um, I do it every year. I, I, don't, I don't think I ever recorded it. I should. I should record my playoff prediction. 
and um, and, and post it. But I, I have it in a text. I have it in writing. And I've continued to have the Clippers at eight. Um, I thought the Clippers would be a team that would surprise a lot of people. They have a lot of veterans, so this is a team that can compete for the playoffs. Obviously, I didn't expect Kawhi to be injured as frequently as he has been. I did not expect them to be 14-10. I expected them to be probably a 500 team. Um, and they've been 500 in their last uh, six games. But, I mean, James Harden's averaging 22-9. and nine. Norman Powell's averaging a career-high 25-51 and 51 from three. That will go down, so I expect Norman Powell to come back to earth a little bit. But this is still a much better team than a lot of people expected. And even I was on the high side of the Clippers, and I didn't expect them to be this good. The Bucks, 11-10. and 10. You're probably wondering why they're so high. They have a net rating of 1. They did lose to Atlanta, but they had won 7 in a row. Giannis is averaging 33-12, 7 assists, 11 free throws a game. The Bucks have one of the league's easiest remaining schedules. I think they could still make a run for probably, you know, maybe the three seed, a top four seed. But like, this is a dangerous Bucks team when Giannis is playing this way. Next up, we get into the real contenders. We have the we have the Rockets. I mean, they're fifteen and eight, with plus seven net rating. They beat the Thunder. They did lose back to back losses against Sacramento and Golden State. None of those are really good either. But it, this team is young, right? Their two best players are on rookie contracts. So I, I, this isn't anything to me that's overwhelming or shocking. I'm excited. Golden State, they're 13-8 at the time of this recording, a plus six net rating. I can't believe they lost that game to the Denver Nuggets. But went and, and went and beat the fucking Rockets without Steph Curry and Draymond Green. Kaminga, 33 points on 13-22 to 22 shooting. Great defense. They only they won the game scoring less than 100 points. Um Curry and Andrew Wiggins are the only guys that have really been consistently scoring the basketball. They've had they were a deeper team, but a lot of the guys aren't consistent in terms of their offensive output. So you know maybe Kuminga isn't that guy, but he if you can continue to showcase him and maybe trade him for a consistent piece, that would be awesome. Seven Memphis. We're gonna see a lot of West Coast teams. Um, they're 15 and eight with a plus seven net rating. But John Morant isn't the only piece on this team that's worth talking about. He was a team worst minus 32 against Sacramento King. Sacramento Kings, uh, and they still won by five. Santi Aldama has been incredible. He's been on my fantasy basketball team. He's been a waiver wire demon. I picked up Jay Huff for a little bit. He's been good. Marcus Smart. Obviously, uh, John Morant, you have Desmond Bain, Jaron Jackson. This team is incredible. They're deep. They're going to make it. Uh, listen, John Morant's going to continue to get better and continue to kind of get back into basketball, but this team is damn dangerous. Number six, the Orlando Magic. They're 16-8 and eight at this point. Plus five net rating, but they're playing without Paulo Banquero. But Franz Wagner, I mean, they're 13 and 2 in their last 15. This is because of him. When Banquero is off the floor, Franz Wagner is averaging 28, 7, 6, and two steals per 75 possessions. He has been a bona fide all star. If he can stay healthy, they're going to win a lot of games. Next up, the Knicks. This is one of my championship favorites. The defense still hasn't come around. They're 14 and 8 with a plus eight net rating. Um, but New York is scoring 120, a league leading 122 points per 100 possessions. Jalen Brunson, Grunthe Town, over 25 and 40 from three. Um, Bridges, Josh Hart, and OG averaging between 13 and 18, all being incredible defenders. This team is going to get to that top 10 defense, and when they do, they're going to be incredible. Four Dallas Mavericks, 15 and 8, only a plus 7 net rate only. Um, they've won 10 of the last 11, picked one five of them without Luka. Kyrie's been incredible this season. Um, but even so, the, the additions of this team, obviously, P.J. Washington last year averaging 13 points. Clay Thompson this past offseason averaging 13. Najee Marshall averaging 12. Quentin Grimes averaging 9. Spencer Dinwiddie averaging 8 points. Wa P.J. Washington, Quentin Grimes, and Spencer Dinwiddie all averaging 39 from deep. And then Daniel Gafford and Derek Lively pulling opponents toward the rim. Everything is clicking. And then once Luke gets back into shape, this is going to be a fucking dangerous team. Next up, I have the Cavs. I know 20-3. and three, Okay. They started the season 15-0 and 0, since then 5-3. and three, But whatever. They have a plus 10 net rating. They won. They have a three on a three game win streak, beating Boston and Denver. Darius Garland, Donovan Mitchell, Jared Allen, Evan Bowie, all been incredible. Karis LeVert has been good. George's Niang, Ty Jerome, three of those guys have combined for five different twenty point games off the bench. That's incredible. Their bench is much better than people um, anticipated. I think they're they would be the best team in the East if there wasn't for. Well, I'm not going to talk about them yet. I'm going to talk about them soon. But the Oklahoma City Thunder, they're the best team in the West to me. 17-5, a plus 12 net rating. They haven't had Isaiah Hartenstein and Chet Holmgren on the floor at the same time. Chet's been out, but Isaiah Hartenstein has been doing his best to do his impersonation, but he's been a much better rebounder. Shea's like an MVP, but Jalen Williams has been the star. 22 points, 6 rebounds, 5 assists, 2 threes, 2 steals, a block, 39 from deep. One of the best defenders in the league. He is one of the best players in the NBA. And the, the Thunder, with all these draft picks, they have a chance to be one of the most expensive teams in NBA history in like 10 years, but one of the best. The number one team in the country, country, NBA, yeah, I guess the country technically. No, because Toronto. Well, and the country. Boston, 18 and four. They have a plus 10 net rating. They were without Jason Tatum and they beat Detroit 130 to 120. Jalen Brown had 28, 26 from Chris House Porzingis. Sam Hauser had 20. Peyton Pritchard had 19, but, uh, Jalen Jason Tatum's unrated in terms of his passing ability. Jalen Brown steps right into that. Nine assists. It doesn't matter who's playing Boston because 
like Boston, you have to be perfect to beat them. And they're the best team in the NBA. And that's all I want to talk about. I just kind of want to talk about some teams. I like talking about basketball. Don't know how much I'll talk about it going forward. Um, again, we are in football season. But uh, yeah, if you enjoyed that, make sure to comment down below. If you want to see anything else, make sure to let me know. And YouTube thinks you like this video. Find that up there, right?